I'm in mid Maryland and wanted to do an experiment to get a better idea of exactly what comes out of that ProVap 110. So I raised this triple deep up on bricks and I put a glass panel on top of the feeding shim. I drilled a quarter inch hole in the back of the side of the feeding shim and I angled it so that when the ProVap is inserted it will discharge not into a cluster of bees which might be filling but rather up against the back wall of the feeding shim. But first I wanted to show how much vapor comes out of these devices. This ProVap is filled with three grams of oxalic acid and there's a substantial amount of cloud that is formed when the acid sublimates. We're just going to let this run until the end of the heating cycle. Once it's inverted and the oxalic acid falls from its reservoir in the white cap down into the heated canister, the temperature gauge, which started at 230, quickly falls down to 190. from where it starts to increase again back up to 230 at which point there's a light click and uh, the oxalic acid is completely sublimated. Now let's go ahead and do an experiment. We're going to insert the ProVap 110 carefully into the hole invert it and the glass covered feeding shim is quickly filled with oxalic acid vapors. The vapors are striking the back of the shim, glancing off of it, then filling the shim and then cascading down through the three deeps, each of which has ten frames of drawn comb. It quickly clears. Of course the bottom is open so you would expect it to, qu to uh, quickly clear out as the vapors, which are heavier than air, fall to the bottom of the hive and exit. Here's another shot. We'll just show how the fumes impact the back of the shim. But what I found out was that there's not an awful lot of white oxalic acid powder residue that comes out of that device. The microcrystals are indeed in a cloud form and very little of it, if any, would cling to any surface. This area where I'm wiping now has been impacted a few times now, so there is some buildup of oxalic acid crystals. On the right is a small hole that has a little bit of fibers from the wood that I drilled through and you can see how fine those crystals are that uh, form as a result of the oxalic acid being sublimated. They are indeed uh, micro crystals. So I also want to find out how hot that stream of vapors gets. Frankly, I couldn't feel any temperature difference, and it's about 50 degrees outside, but I could not feel hardly any warmth at all until I got very, very close, close enough, maybe about an inch, so that the uh, microcrystals actually deposited on 
on the skin of my fingers. No, there's no acidic burning sensation at all. It's like baby powder. In this case, I've removed the bricks and we're going to do it again so that now the triple is completely enclosed. What happens to all those fumes now that the bottom board has been replaced? Well, they those fumes quickly drop to the bottom. My uh, leaking mouse guard is not leaking so badly today. And in the back there's very little fumes coming out of the mic board. In this case I shook a few bees inside just to see what their uh, what the impact of fumes would have on those bees and they are as active as ever. Don't seem to be affected at all by the cloud of microcrystals that had engulfed them. As a clarification, the vapor is a cloud of microoxylic acid crystals which are deposited on all surfaces inside the hive including on bees and mites. Indeed, it is thought that the acid crystals landing on the soft feet of mites causes injuries to the mites which leads to their death. The visible buildup of crystals on the back wall of the feeding shim only resulted because of the direct and close impact of several separate vaporizations. I wanted to better understand the impact of a stream of oxalic acid injected into my feeding shim during a winter broodless period at which time thousands of bees normally gather loosely in the feeding shim. It is worth noting that when inspecting my 24 colonies, I have noticed that the bees always gather at the front of my east-facing hives and never near the back wall. So, what did I learn? The vapor generated by the ProVap 110 is not a hot stream of gas. The vapor cools immediately on exiting the device so is not going to overheat bees gathered in the shim. In addition, when injected in the rear so that it strikes and glances off the back wall of the feeding shim where bees seldom are, there is little to no opportunity for bee kill due to their being coated with an excessive amount of oxalic acid microcrystals.